Hi all, John at Bauhaus Performance. Today we're going to go over slip angle and the secret to faster cornering. So let's start with what is slip angle. So slip angle is going to be the difference between where the tires are pointing and where the tire is actually going. So this is going to lead to an understeer or an oversteer scenario or potentially just the rotation of the actual car. You can also see in the video below the demonstration of the slip angle. And um, what that is, is basically from the bead to the racing surface, it's the deflection of uh, when the tire is, is essentially sliding uh, across the bead. And so the slip angle is really important because if you over exceed your slip angle, that means that you're going to be leaving time on the table. So managing your slip angle is going to properly maximize your grip and ensure that your tire is always in the optimal range. Your tires are not sliding and then you can maximize your time on track. So how this actually works in practice is that the tires are going to be flexing under load. So when you start loading up one of those tires on the, you know, on the outside tire when you're turning, uh, it's going to create a slight lag between the steering input and the actual direction of travel. Most racing tires are going to peak at a lateral grip around 6 to 10 degrees of slip angle. Um, and obviously your street tires are going to be significantly less than that since they're designed more for comfort and drivability than pure speed. So having too little slip angle will not use the full grip of the tire, which is going to make you slower. And then too much slip angle is going to be the tires are sliding as opposed to gripping the racing surface, and you're going to end up losing speed and losing time on track as well. So how you want to manage your driving style to optimize the slip angle? The first thing is going to be to avoid excessive turning. So if the car isn't rotating, you know, the wheel stops or the car stops moving with the actual inputs that you're giving the wheel, uh, you're understeering and you've essentially overloaded the slip angle of those tires. Um, and the tires are, are overloaded, slipping um, off the racing surface and you're going to uh, understeer. So you want to return back to you know, your new, a more neutral position. We talked about this in the understeer video to check that out. Um, but you want to return to a uh, more neutral position to manage that, uh, to get those tires back in the range where they can actually be operable. You also want to have your smooth inputs to manage that weight transfer. If you load up those tires too quickly, um, you're going to basically make it so that the tire is overloaded in a quick manner. Um, you want to ease into your uh, slip. You want to go from, you know, your zero to, you know, five degrees, then up to your, you know, uh, 10 degrees in more of a slow manner. Um, and then you want to be balancing that 10 degrees. Okay. You know, are my inputs putting me over to 11 where the tires are slipping or can I drop it back down to, you know, 10 or nine and still be in a range where the tires can maintain grip. And then some troubleshooting techniques. You know, if the car is feeling lazy, you don't have the same bite that you were looking for. Um, there's probably too little slip, um, and we'll talk about ways to manage that. Or if the car is too twitchy, um, you probably have too much slip, um, and you need to adjust that accordingly. Um, and we'll talk about that. Tools like an AIM or a V-Box um, have options in there that you can utilize to help measure and refine slip angle. Um, they do need to be uh, tuned to your tire, so keep that in mind. Uh, but those might be useful tools that you would want to check out. Um, there are some affordable options like an AIM Solo uh, that could give you that same, um, that same piece of data uh, that might help you out on track. So then overslipping, um, oversteer or understeer, you know, tires are sliding. Uh, it does look cool and you know if you're showing off to your friends they're on the side of the track watching you it's like wow he's really you know on the ragged edge well he, you're actually over the ragged edge if you're running into scenarios where you're um, exceeding your your slip angle so you need to keep that in mind that you're it might look cool but it's going to be leaving time out on track um, where you could uh, be faster and then under slipping it's a lot more stable you know it's you have a more confident uh, feeling car, but you're leaving time out on the track, right? And you need to make sure that you're managing drivability for your car and for you, and also, you know, speed on track. Obviously, there are a lot of cars, you know, probably the best example is in Formula One right now, 
There's the Red Bull car, which is very, um, very difficult to drive. Um, and that's really a function of them not being able to manage accordingly uh, the overslip versus the underslip. Um, it's in a much more uh, slip prone position. Um, and that leaves it very twitchy, which is going to cause it to be a lot less drivable. So uh, for them, they have new drivers that come in. They're unable to manage the slip angle and uh, lose confidence in the actual car. So let's talk about how you can fix this. The main thing is going to be managing your pressures. Um, you can also change compounds, but let's say you're um, we're just going to stick. But we're just going to stick with the pressures for now. So when we think about, again, that deflection of the bead versus the racing surface, uh, the higher pressure, there's going to be a smaller slip angle window. Um, so you're going to be a lot more reduced in uh, how much how much kind of bounce back off the racing surface your tire is going to have. And then the inverse of that is going to be you can drop those pressures really low, but then you're going to have a really flexible tire that's going to be uh, potentially harder to drive. It's going to bounce back. Uh, faster. So keep that in mind. The best way to manage this is really going to be go out there, see how the tire feels, uh, collect some data, right? Get your tires, your tires, get your tire pressures right when you get off track. Make sure that you are making note of that, make note of how the car feels, and then apply that to the next session, right? Make sure you note the conditions of the track, if the track was green or if it was rubbered in. Um, and use that information to ensure that you are maximizing the slip angle. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you did find this video helpful, we do appreciate it if you do like and subscribe. It really helps us out in the algorithm. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact us. Our contact information is below. Feel free to shoot us an email. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks, y'all.